Hey everybody, Drew here with a really, really unusual one for you today. This beautiful 1996 Toyota Cresta. This is basically a Toyota Chaser or a Toyota Mark II. So it's the X100 chassis. The Mark II's got a little bit of a different front end and is a little bit below this one. And obviously the Chaser is the sporty version of it, right? But they're all on the same chassis. The big difference is if you look, the uh, windows have frames on this car. We're on the Chaser and the Mark II, they're a hard top like that Crown Majesta. So I picked this up at the port. This is for you guys that import cars, you girls that import cars, you know what I mean by a 4.0B. This is a very good car. Um, thank God this problem started at home, not at the port. I uh, went to the port, I had to jump it. Uh, was getting it on the trailer, it died, thought, you know, well, it's been sitting a while, whatever, jumped it again, didn't think about it, got it home, put a new battery in it, and it had a crank and no start, and then I thought I fixed it, I thought what I found was a loose harness, whatever, uh, went out and about and got stranded and thought, okay, got to look into this. So I was thinking uh, no fuel because during the crank and no start, I would uh, squirt starting fluid in the throttle body and it would fire right up and then die. Um, you know, so I was hoping it was not the ECU, hoping it was not some kind of an immobilizer, which I found out these don't have. And I am at the conclusion that it is, in fact, the fuel pump. So I wanted to show you guys what I did. Um, first of all, you got to take out the back seat. So I'm going to show you sitting on top of this Crown Majesta. This is my wife's personal car. The bottom seat, part your butts on, there's that hook and that hook. And all they do is pop into those slots and they're they're in there they pop in so you just got to grab the seat and yank really hard obviously you know not like king kong or anything you don't want to break the the frame or bend it whatever but you pop that out pop that out um why did i say king kong perhaps i meant the hulk whatever anyway uh and then the back seat there is so one two three four 10 millimeter bolts that hold these guys down okay and then these hooks on the back of the seat just slide into uh, these slots here so certainly not rocket science to get the seat out there are 14 millimeter bolts that hold in the seat belts um, and then this access panel is just held in with um, RTV so this is a really big thing for you that have JDM cars. You know, when you go to put gas in it, how there's positive pressure coming out when you take your gas cap off. So when I started taking this 14 millimeter bolt off of the fuel line right here, I had, I certainly didn't have pressure. I was ready for that thinking if, you know, if I'm wrong and the fuel pump's actually good, there's going to be crazy pressure there. There was not, which helps tell me I'm right, but there was a constant kind of gentle flow. What seemed like a lot more than you know pressure from fuel pump it was just coming and coming and coming so i thought hmm open the gas tank relieved the pressure went back over there cracked it loose and uh and no more fuel so when you're inside the car the tank for this vehicle is inside the trunk so the last thing that you want to do is spill gas when you're doing it so now that i knew that there was no more fuel in the line for the most part um this is let me see i think it's a 19 millimeter um you know let me see. Yeah, 19 millimeter, 14 millimeter. I believe it's a 19 millimeter. Nevertheless, um, this connection is insane. I mean, doing this without breaking something is almost a miracle. What I found to help is I got my 14 on this one and held it kind of down here. I stood up on my knees as much as I can without banging my head into the roof and pushed down on the 19 millimeter one as I kind of pulled up with the other one, trying to keep all my force rotational and not directional because I didn't want to bend or break anything. So then you got to kind of jimmy that, that hard plastic line and do it the rest of the way with your fingers. Then obviously that one just, you know, comes out. I believe that's a return line, right? Um, that should just come right off easy peasy. Then there's a bunch of these Phillips or what I assume are eight millimeter screws. And we're going to take that out and, and uh, dive into what's wrong with it. All right. So that's out. I'm going to show you guys inside the tank. I really hope that that's like normal for there to be a little bit of rust in there, but um, yeah, so getting that out was a hoot. You know, like I said, it was those screws, but it's getting it, it's twisting it, and once you finally get it, um, the lines will puke a little bit, so obviously have like a towel here or something. I'll show you guys what we got. 
Hopefully it never needs to be done on this one because those are power reclining rear seats. No fun. But yeah, so when you when you you know rotate it up and out and kind of twist around this hump here, uh, these are gonna puke some gas. You got this little screen thing and everything's a little corroded in there. Like I said, hopefully that's not you know incorrect for for the year and the, the miles. Like I said, it's got forty thousand miles on it. It's in really good shape. I'm um, just going to change out this filter now, which isn't rocket science. I'm sure you guys don't need to see that uh, and get it back in. Okay, so if you're curious, here's what I found. So thank God it was just a total blessing that I found on the body of the pump assembly what I was fairly certain was the, uh, the terminal inside the harness. Now, if you know the way those work, they have a piece of steel. It's kind of like springy steel, and the end of it's bent over, and it springs. This part springs against... The terminal from the other side of the harness and that's how you get a good solid connection well i found one of those tips broken off and sure enough i put power with my battery charger here i put power to the ground and up here the positive terminal and just ever so slightly touched the harness and it would connect and disconnect connect and disconnect and that was why i was getting an alternate uh, crank with no start the connection to the old fuel pump which is still good um, I guess I'll save that, you know, for, for a, a keepsake, um, you know, because I'm, I don't have access to a junkyard to get a freaking JDM harness, right? So the new fuel pump came with its own harness. So what I did was I spliced it using the, the crush connector style things. And as you see here, my positive wire, I zip tied it to the rubber hose here. So if this was to disintegrate because of gas and leave just a piece of metal, it's only going to touch... Um, you know this this hose clamp here it's not going to touch anything that would short it out or cause a spark this is ground so it's free to do whatever it wants and it can't reach my positive so this is obviously if you guys are following this video step by step you're doing so at your own risk and uh, that's what is a common sense solution for me so now i know for a fact that when i put this back together unless that fuel pump is um you know bad out of the box that this this old girl is going to run just fine, but we do have some drama. I want to just tell you guys, we all learned from our mistakes. When I was screwing around with this banjo bolt connection, I, I pulled this aside to see how much play there was, and the little washer, like that guy there, it's like a crush washer, fell down into the engine. I'm about a half hour into trying to find it, and I can't. So I've managed to screw myself, but um, fix the car in the process. So everything goes back together the opposite of the way that it came apart. Again, those seats shouldn't be too intimidating. Hey, if you have a Crown Majesta, I hope for your sake you don't have to do it on, on this car, which is obviously gonna be totally different, but the, um, you know, the back seat's power in that. So, hey, this is Drew. This is a JDM fix. I can't imagine anybody watching this video is actually gonna use this to help them, but uh, if somehow it did help you, I'd appreciate hearing about it in the comments. If it entertained you, or if you just like these beautiful pearl white beautiful beautiful cars from japan go ahead and give this video a thumbs up um if it wasn't helpful please don't give it a thumbs down because again there's not many people you know daily driving this car that are into the same issue that i am but uh, if you like the channel definitely subscribe try to put on some good content for you guys and usually it is a bit more concrete like how to fix an odyssey or a tundra or a solera or a prius or something that you know most people daily drive in the united states so anyways i'm drew this is the fuel pump video for the jzx 100 cresta thank you hey guys one more quick little thing you see that tab with the ground on it so you see the gray harness and then next to it there's that tab while this is out um i did this and i, I didn't tell you about it before while this is out bend that just a little bit being very careful not to bend you know the body the circular part but just bend that tab towards you a little bit and it'll make getting this thing in and out much easier. The other thing is, again, this isn't meant to teach somebody who doesn't know basic mechanics mechanics, but just thought I'd throw it out there in case you've never worked on something like this. Um, you shouldn't be doing any of this without experience, but um, those screws, you alternate, you know, like at 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 7 o'clock kind of thing, but keep going around a couple times because as the, you know, the rubber uh, compresses it'll loosen the other screws the other thing this connection be really careful not to bend or break this if you do you're pretty much screwed uh, i bent it a little bit but i think i'm all right and i figured while i have you guys i will uh fire it up well it didn't explode i don't think it leaks hallelujah
Awesome.